Hi guys and welcome to the State of Crypto, your one-stop source for all crypto-related news. I am your host Martin and this is episode 115, Virtual Griffith and North Korea, XRP name dropped on BBC segment and Jack Dorsey's future defining plan. Guys, happy Sunday. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. If you're catching this stream live, welcome. And if you're catching any re uh, the replay and having any suggestions for us, please leave us a comment below. We really want to know what you're thinking. If you want to keep up to date with the latest scripture related news, make sure you subscribe. You hit that like button and that bell so you're notified when we go live. And if you want to keep on chatting with us once the stream is on, you can join us on the Discord. The link is in the description, guys. Um, again, as I was saying, happy Sunday. I hope, I hope you're having a blast. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you rested, even in case you were resting on the weekend. And if you weren't and you had to work, well, I hope you get to rest on your rest day and have a blast uh, on the weekend still. Um, again, week starts tomorrow for crypto uh, space already starting. So uh, let's get on with the news and see what is happening on this crazy crypto space. There's uh, some good news going on today. Uh, certainly do like some of them. And then uh, we'll uh, do the analysis for the market, right? Just the way we always do it. So uh, yeah, let's see what's happening. Let's shift off to our regular screen. There we go. And uh, we'll take it from there, right? Awesome, so we're here. Uh, and that's there, we go. Awesome. Cool. So, um, basically, Dorsey, the CEO of both payment company Square and Twitter, has set its sights on the future of Bitcoin and technology in Africa, and it's more than 1.2 billion people. Dorsey, who earlier this year launched a crypto division of Square, has recently been touring Africa and on living this week announced he plans to move there for a few months next year. Um, he actually went on to say that sad to be leaving the continent for now, uh, Africa will define the future, especially the Bitcoin one. I'm not sure where yet, but I'll be living the, here uh, for three to six months in mid 2020. Um, why is it important? Well, if you want to be on top of things, you want to be close to the pulse, right? Close to where things happen. So him moving there, it's probably because he really wants to know what is happening. He wants to have his uh, finger on the pulse because he probably believes there's a lot of potential in that area. Anyways, while in Nigeria, Dorsey attended a Bitcoin meetup and met Bitcoin business owners in Ghana, according to reports. Um, <clears throat> His uh, trip to Africa uh, began in early November and then it included uh, countries like Ethiopia, Ghana, Nigeria, and South Africa. It's not clear yet if one of these countries is the one he plans to move on next year. Again, like I said, he did meet uh, with some uh, business owners in Ghana. Uh, the data somewhat supports Dorsey's expectations that Africa will lead the way on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Now, developing regions and countries uh, have long been expected to benefit the most from Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and the underlying blockchain technology. Now, the same um, way may, many uh, developing countries have leapfrog developed ones when it comes to the mobile payment payments, uh, something that uh, something that uh, basically the same will happen with Bitcoin and blockchain, right? Now remember, there's like waves and cycles, right? Like some countries will uh, jump ahead on certain technologies due to the needs that they have uh, for money to flow quicker, right? That's why mobile payments came along uh, to have be able to make those transactions like faster than. Uh, you know the countries. That's why uh, you know countries like China have uh, AliChat and uh, sorry uh, AliPay and WeChat, which you can use to like transfer money by scanning the QR code. Something that's starting to be adopted by other countries. Also in other countries like in Mexico, you have these uh, Spay payments, which uh, happen from bank to bank, and they're same day, uh, almost takes seconds for those transactions to go through. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if they're pre-fronting accounts. Um, yeah, Vostra Nostro. But again, it, the, the payments are happening quicker, um, not through the use of XRP. That's this has been going on for a couple of years now. Uh, but again, uh, these companies do have that going on. So again, um, there have been needs within countries that have led to some countries really taking uh, certain advances in, in the banking system, right? So again, uh, yeah, maybe some developing countries are gonna go. Some like really developing countries are gonna jump ahead on the Bitcoin train or the crypto train. And they might lead the way and really uh, become the places that everyone looks to when they want to see what is going on with the crypto sphere um, or how to develop uh, certain products. So again, uh, they, they can become like the test 
bunnies, let's say, for these products, right? Anyways, uh, Nate Hin Hinman, the head of growth at uh, on-chain liquidity protocol Bancor, told Crypto News website at the Crypt that in emerging markets like Africa, the shallow reach of traditional money systems means that there's less resistance to new financial technology. Again, helping drive that adoption that I was talking about a couple of minutes ago, right? <clears throat> Just because uh, the, the banking institutions not as well, or the financial institutions are, have not been as developed as in the in the more developed nations, it gives them a little bit more freedom to decide what they're going to do, how they want to go ahead with it. So again, it's better for everyone in those countries. And again, they will come up with solutions for everyone else to follow. Anyways, major Bitcoin and crypto companies from global exchanges like Binance, Belfrix, and Paxful uh, to cryptos like uh, to other crypto groups like Bancor are also expanding into Africa, and it's no coincidence, right? They're there's a lot of potential there to bank the unbanked to uh certainly help develop the country via uh crypto so again it could be where most of the adoption might happen and that's why a lot maybe a lot of the companies and even jack dorsey is thinking about moving there right again uh, i believe it's interesting that uh, that's happening anyways uh, let's go on to the next one right uh crypto expert charged with aiding north korea anyways the U.S. Uh, arrested an Ethereum Foundation crypto scientist in charge with helping North Korea use blockchain technology to evade sanctions and launder money. Now, Virgil Griffith, 36, was arrested on Thursday at Los Angeles International Airport in charge with conspiring to evade U.S. sanctions against the regime of dictator Kim Jong-un. According to the statement from Manhattan U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman, um, Griffith, a U.S. citizen who lives in Singapore, attended a blockchain and crypto conference in Pyongyang in April, despite specific uh, State Department... Uh, uh, a specific State Department, uh, let's say, uh, guidelines, I guess you can say, right? Anyways, Griffith provided highly technical information to North Korea, knowing that this information could be used to help North Korea launder money and evade sanctions, Berman said in a statement Friday. He jeopardized the sanctions that both Congress and the President have enacted to place maximum pressure on North Korea's dangerous regime. Now, Griffith, a California Institute of Technology PhD, says he moved to Singapore in 2015 because he concluded that it was the best uh, place for new growth is Asia. Uh, though the charges were filed in New York, Griffith is scheduled to appear uh, or to first appear in federal court in Los Angeles sometime Friday. Now the charges against Griffin don't name Ethereum. According uh, to the complaint, he's employed by an entity that functions as an open source platform for the development of blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies, including cryptocurrency one. Now, uh, on a related article, this article farther says that Griffith has uh, contributed to the Hacker Magazine 2006, uh, 2000, 2600, which uh, tweeted Friday that Griffith arrest amount to an attack on all of us. They actually stated that this is an attack on all of us. Virgil is a friend, a 2600 writer, a hope speaker, and a true hacker who has always stood up for freedom and democratic ideals. That is from a tweet from the magazine. Uh, they do go on to say that... Um, or Emmanuel Goldstein, uh, he went on to say that I kept on warning him that it was a trap. Um, he said, uh, adding Griffith insisted on speaking to the FBI without a lawyer. What's ironic is that afterwards he was convinced that they totally got where he was coming from. Uh, the complaint notes that Griffith appeared to work for the North Korean government, answer specific questions about cryptocurrency and seemingly formulated plans to facilitate the exchange of digital money between North Korea and South Korea, despite knowing that assisting with such exchange would violate sanctions. Now, FBI Assistant Director in charge William F. Sweeney Jr. said, there are deliberate reasons uh, sanctions have been levied on North Korea. The country and its leaders pose a literal threat to national security and all of our allies. We cannot allow any, any, uh, anyone to evade sanctions because the consequences of North Korea obtaining funding, technology, and information to further its desire to build nuclear weapons put the world at risk. Now, uh, I, I do agree that it puts the world at risk, but again, it puts the world at risk because it threatens the way the U.S. can operate, right? Because the U.S. is one of the few countries that has all these nuclear weapons. If someone else has nuclear weapons, they can stand up to the U.S. So again, you don't want anyone else to have the same technology because then they can stand up to you and say, no, I don't agree with your way of thinking. I don't agree with the way you do things. Again, I don't want to get political on this. I don't want to get the... Uh, I don't want to uh, create, like, different sides uh, of uh, argument over this article. I, I want to focus on what it's for. But again, like I said, um, you should, when you're the bully and someone else tries to stand up, you, you try to, like, pressure him down so that, you know, he doesn't become an, another bully so it's not your competition or he doesn't stand up to you, right? So again... Um, that's one of the ways that you can look at this. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, again, in a uh, reference uh, or a similar article, right? Uh, Ethereum's Vitalik Buterin uh, signed a free Virgil Griffith petition following the FBI arrest. Now, um, he came to the aid of uh, Griffith, right? Whom we talked about in the previous two articles. Uh, Buterin Sunday uh, tweet storm references a piece from Italian developer Enrico Talon who urged the Ethereum uh, frontman to start a petition to free Griffith. Now, uh, Buterin Six Point Defense argues that in addition to his excellent character, much of Griffith's speech was uh, publicly available information anyways. He says, I don't think that Virgil gave North Korea any kind of real help in doing anything bad. He delivered a presentation based on publicly available information about open source software. There was no weird hackery advanced tut tutoring. Now, some have criticized the Ethereum uh, Foundation for not denouncing the trip, but Buterin claims that uh, many have counseled Griffith against, against it in the first place, and uh, there was... And if there was any indication that it was gonna, uh, that was going in that direction, he said he would have reacted much more strongly against it. Now, good, good reasoning aside, Griffith unfortunately still broke federal law, as some Eagle High followers point out. According to the Manhattan U.S. Attorney, all travelers must first get permission from the federal government before traveling to uh, North Korea. Now, Washington has prohibited U.S. citizens from visiting North Korea since 2017. In September, the government continued uh, its sanctions on the on the PRK regime by extending the travel ban by another year. Now, Buterin has not yet provided a link to the petition. Uh, when he does, I'm not sure who's going to sign it. I'm probably I'm not going to get involved with this stuff anyways. Uh, but again, uh, the only point that I get from this article is that if you're really free, how can the government tell you where you can and cannot go to right shouldn't that be your decision and your risk right if you're free and you live in a free country why would someone tell you you can't go there you get sanctions and you're gonna go to jail if you go there i mean people should be able to go wherever they please uh the, the government all the government should do is recommend that you don't go there but they should not impose a sanction where you can even go to jail for just traveling to a country where uh you know why is it federal law that you cannot travel to a country right that is my point here i mean is it right that the government decides where you can travel to and where you cannot travel to where's your freedom to decide that right again is the government then overstepping their bounds uh as to what they can say and what they cannot do because then where where is your real freedom there right you're not you're not free to decide where you can go you're taking that freedom away from you anyways like i said i don't want to get political uh just another uh thought there um in case you guys want to Keep on talking about that afterwards. Uh, what's going on with Ripple, man? Ripple unlocks another uh, 25, uh, 20, 225 million worth of XRP, uh, dollars worth of XRP, that is. Uh, anyways, uh, it's that time of the month again. You know, according to Twitter account, Well Alert uh, keeps a close eye on the large crypto transactions. They they said that you know Ripple unlocked this from the escrow wallet. Again, we know this is going to happen. It doesn't really surprise us. Do I really care about it? Does it scare me? No, man. But again, as expected, like the crypto community went to the circ and some people on Twitter jumped to conclusions uh, and didn't shy away from like the using the word scam again. There is something that we've talked about before. It's something that even uh, Brett Garlinghouse has come out and talked about, right? Um, again, I'm not 100% sure why they're um, giving this too much... Um, thought right every month did they just want to spread like fud maybe um or yeah sorry guys one second uh getting the playlist here to go again there we go again like i said um yeah not 100 percent sure why they keep on reporting on this like it's a big deal it's not it, it this all these it just does it's help the ecosystem the xrp ecosystem work better because then they can use this money they don't even sell the xrp they just sell part of it and they use it to fund either new projects that they want to buy so they can grow the ecosystem and make this all work better or they just uh you know uh, ended up uh giving liquidity to the market that's what they use this for so again not 100 sure why they are going with this uh why people are jumping to conclusions saying that uh, all this stuff about ripple right anyways uh on to the next article um this article, I like how it starts, right? Uh, there was a time just a few years ago when Bitcoin, crypto, and blockchain were topics best left for those in the French, on the French. Uh, now, however, mainstream media have started to cover this space quite often, writing about its, uh, write, writing about it, shooting uh, shows about it, and such. In short, cryptocurrencies are starting to enter the mainstream conscious. And I do agree, crypto uh, every day is a little bit more present. We hear more about it on the news. 
on everyday life and i do believe it's uh it's good right anyways uh so far the spotlight has been on bitcoin though it uh, seems that other networks are getting recognition too like ethereum and xrp now speaking to the bbc in a recent segment on cryptocurrencies natalie ostman the ceo of british fintech startup curve took some time to mention xrp and ripple discussing the current fiat system ostman noted that uh, the settlement and clearance of transactions take days before adding uh, that these transactions are of high cost for companies, governments, and consumers. At the end of the day, she even went as far as to say that the traditional settlement model is not good for the economy, presumably in reference to the fact that the slow and expensive transactions decrease the inefficiency of the capitalistic structures that govern much of society. Now, Osman um, then name drop Ripple, you know, the parent company of XRP, or the company that uses XRP for their uh, transactions. And they're uh, saying they use XRP to increase their speed and lower the cost of payments across the board, as across the board specifically. Um, they're producing commercial uh, opportunities for companies to do cross-border exchanges, removing the multiple-day process by using cryptocurrencies. And then she does say something, or they quote her saying something that I'm not 100% sure. She says, uh, cryptocurrencies are unproven and non-volatile. Hell no, man. <laughs> Cryptos are very volatile. Anyways, uh, I'm not sure what she was trying to say with that. Uh, or if they got that wrong on the article. Again, it's something that really uh, struck me there. Uh, anyways, she says, uh, though central banks are starting to look at this. She explained uh, certain that this technology has some viability in the real world, uh, referring to the Ripple one, right? Anyways, uh, while many of the realm of traditional finance may be confused about the volatility or uh, the viability of Ripple and its products, firms have used the company's uh, products, uh, firms that, sorry, got tongue just there. Firms that have used the company's products <laughs> have claimed that they have seen improvements to their business. We covered it earlier, right? Um, one of the chief executives of Mercury FX, uh, a company that has uh, used XRP um, on the man liquidity product, or Ripple's on the man liquidity product, claimed that um, the use of the technology has allowed transactions to speeds to drop to seconds and the price of transactions to drop by upwards of 90%. Now, they did a trial with Norfinitch. We talked about that in an earlier article. And they also successful that they were uh, soon uh, facilitating payments for UK businesses that imports Mexican foods. Um, now, I'll try to link that somewhere up here in the corner once the stream is done. Uh, I'll see if I can do that, uh, if I can find that the stream when we talked about that. That was a couple days ago. <clears throat> Anyways, on to Litecoin. Litecoin has always enjoyed a position of, uh, owing to many developers on its network. Now, um, in case of the Layer 2 scalability solution, the Lightning Network, uh, Litecoin was the first to get uh, the tech deployed on it. More recently, uh, to bring about fungibility and privacy, Litecoin Foundation was working with Green++ developer David Burkett to implement uh, opt-in Mimblewimble via extension of blocks on Litecoin. Now, <clears throat> the question is, can these two crucial technologies come together under the same roof? When asked if Mimblewimble will be Lightning compatible, Litecoin creator Charlie Lee on um, the latest edition of Magical Crypto Friends stated Mimblewimble is currently not Lightning compatible, but I think they, meaning developers, are working on ways to make it work with Lightning. I don't know how compatible it will be in the future, but you can always still use Litecoin main chain for Lightning. Uh, now, the Litecoin Foundation pitched uh, two draft proposals for opt-in Mimblewimble via extension blocks, a privacy protocol in October. Um, now, there were concerns regarding possible delistings from exchanges if the coin is classified as a privacy coin specifically uh, at the time when popular crypto exchanges like CoinCheck and Upbeat had uh, disabled trading of privacy coins like Monero, Zcash, and Dash. Now, cryptos, um, now uh, according to Lee, this won't be an issue since Mimblewimble will have opt-in features. He actually stated, uh, we obviously we we're obviously concerned about the exchanges delisting privacy coins, so we are kind of going uh, with the opt-in route where you can still use the main, right? Um, so most exchanges would not care about Mimblewimble extension blocks. They would only support the main chain. So again, uh, there would be two chains, right? The main one and the secondary one, let's say. On the main one, you would run uh, your Litecoin, uh, sorry, your Litecoin just the way you do. And then on the second one, you can have the Mimblewimble, which is your, where you can do your privacy transactions. Now, previously, Litecoin Foundation's community manager had also clarified that once Mimblewimble is imp implemented, Litecoin would be different from uh, present privacy coins in the industry since in addition to one of the chains for public transactions there will also be a separate chain for private transactions you have your public and your private like we were talking about anyways unlike privacy coins with just the one chain in uh, which mixes both public and private transactions together now 
is it gonna create a big uh, issue? Maybe, man, maybe, maybe not, right? Again, um, it's yet to be defined how much adoption the Litecoin is gonna get from Mimblewimble, uh, how many people are gonna be using the, the or opting to use the uh, privacy part of it against using the uh, the main, let, let's say the main uh, part of it, the public part of it. So again, is this gonna run, basically it's gonna, da uh, it's gonna boil down to that, right? How many people adopt Mimblewimble. If there's a larger adoption for Mimblewimble and then the main uh, chain becomes, let's say, not obsolete but less useful or illiquid, then you're going to have a lot of problems developed on, uh, with the Litecoin, right? Because then the exchanges, the coin they're going to be listing is not going to be the one that people want to trade. So again, um, different stuff happens, right? There's different uh, ways this can play out. Let's wait and see how they keep on developing this. That's it for the news, my guys. Um, sorry, that was this one. Litecoin War Store opening in. I remember one more. Right, so uh, let's move on to. Um, let's move on to uh, market analysis. Guys, welcome to the analysis part of the stream. Uh, let's see what's going on with market cap. What's it, what happened yesterday? Well, yesterday, market taking uh, money flowing out of the cryptosphere, right? 2.40, sorry, 1.47 percent. Form an opening of 199.52 billion, sitting uh, closing at 196.50 billion. A 2.93 billion move to to the downside. Now still moving to the downside, 0.46 percent. A 908 million dollar move, sitting at 195.59 billion dollars. Now what's happening with Bitcoin dominance? Yesterday, Bitcoin dropping dominance, man. We are, we're seeing that Bitcoin still went a downtrend. Uh, so let's see what's happening with this, man. Yesterday, Bitcoin losing dominance, 0.35%. Uh, uh, from an opening of 69.26, closing at 68.95. Right now, trying to gain a little bit of dominance. Sorry, actually losing, although it looks green. It's zero. It's turning at zero right now. Almost. It just went to neutral, so zero. It's in a 68.95% off market cap. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, it depends on your outlook for Bitcoin and what you want it to do on the market. For me, the more dominance Bitcoin loses, the better it is for the ecosystem, the more divided the cake is, and the better every coin can withstand the fluctuations of the market. Again, having the market be so Bitcoin-centric is not the best for the whole crypto sphere. Again, your comments and your mileage may vary, and that is fine. That is just what I believe that should be happening, right? The more divided it is, the better for everyone. So let's go into Bitcoin, man. What's happening? <laughs> Bitcoin on the daily. What's going on? Sitting at 7,373.70. Before we look at the daily, we're just going to look at the month because we closed the month yesterday. And uh, this is not looking the best uh, for this. So I'm going to have to do uh, one of these things where I can go with this. Apparently, the uh, 20 MA Bollinger Bands went nuts. For some reason, they're looking like crazy and not letting this really show the way it's supposed to. So we're going to fix this in a second. Uh, what's happening here? Uh, let's see. So, uh, this was November, man. We had a red November, a massive, massive red November. Closing at, uh, apparently, what seems to be, let's see, closing at 7,555. So, we're very, very close to this area of support that we have, 7,531.22. Again, today, dropping below that, sitting at the seven, uh, below that 7,429 support, right? So, again, uh, we had talked about how usual Novembers are green. Over the past uh, 11 months, we said, uh, 11 years, or not sorry, I was like, uh, 7 years, sorry. We had had like 5 or 6 green Novembers and like 2 reds. Well, we just got a third. So, uh, that's it for, for the month. <laughs> Let's go look at the weekly. How are we closing the week? Last week, closing green. Nice. Uh, nice green week developing here. Again, closing below the 7,429. Not the best right now. Still moving down uh, a little bit. Uh, to the downside, let's see what's going on here. We apparently undid any chances we had at creating uh, a double bottom. Uh, let's go and look at this, man. We had divergence here, right? We called it out. Uh, we, I have this line here. I need it here. Uh, anyways, it's still here. So I'll take it here as well. Trend divergence again. Uh, price action to the upside. We're seeing it play out, right? That's it for, for this on the weekly. Let's go on the daily. And for that, let me do this quick switch. There we go. 
So again, uh, we were on this upsloping channel. We're trying to break down what ha what's happening with this. Well, uh, you know, uh, if you want to consider this an impulsop, an upsloping consolidation, this I wouldn't really. I'm not sure if I could, should consider this upsloping consolidation. It seems more like a bounce. Um, we're obviously creating a uh, a lower high than the previous high right up here. We're just going with the market. There's nothing yet developing on the daily. Still making a little bit positive momentum, dying out. That that negative momentum died out again. We got this small cross of the. Uh, of the MACD over the signal line. We talked about how sometimes that becomes uh, accompanied by large moves to the upside. Right now, we're not getting it. Uh, still sitting sold at 38.91 on the RSI. Uh, bouncing and rejecting 7,429 today. So again, we try to run up and, and, and bouncing down. So again, guys, I'm not surprised by this movement of Bitcoin. We talked about this, right? We had divergence in the four hours. We had divergence on the one hour. So again, let's go and see what's happening here. On the four hours, what do we have going on, right? Impulse down, up sloping consolidation. Probably gonna break down again. That's fine. Negative momentum dying out a little bit. Sitting neutral on the other side, 46.03. We had, or we we're looking for this divergence to develop, right? Oh, uh, we can still trace this to here, maybe. This is enough to here. Here and here. There we go. So again, creating that hidden bullish divergence. Price continuation. I mean, we're with an uptrend. We're starting to get that move to the upside. The stuff that can happen here is we can start making one of these, uh, try to make a new high, fail, try to make a new low, fail, try to make a new high, fail, try to make a new low, fail, and start tightening that range, uh, getting into a symmetrical triangle that then we can try and break. That'll be one of the ways this can play out. Another one is uh, we're rejecting the higher prices. We might also drop, right? Upslope and consolidation is usually bearish. And it would usually mean that we're gonna get uh, price actually to the downside. So again, be careful with that move to the downside. We've already talked about where we could go. There's an area where we could press maybe around this area, 7,078. Uh, then we have the 7,000s. And then uh, maybe down here we have something else. I can't remember. We, we, I think we had something else out here on the one hour. So we'll look at that on the one hour. Uh, right now, um, not to, if we go to the upside, we know where we can go, right? Break the 7,429. Balance of that 20 MA. Then move and hit that up, that uh, down bottom part of this minor down something channel. Then the 7,131. Then the top part of the major down something channel. And then the mid part of the minor down something channel. Remember, we're within a more major down something channel again. Uh, we're trying to break out, but failed. So again, um, just keep an eye out for this. Here we failed. We try to break out and not fail to get out of this major down something channel again. So yeah, be careful with uh, with your Bitcoin trades. Uh, I'm not too confident the market is going to bounce uh, hardcore yet. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, like I think we were playing it with the idea yesterday that we might, and I'm not sure we're going to get it. Uh, right now, we're since we're rejecting the higher prices. I'm saying maybe it could be a shoulder, maybe a head, and then we might develop another shoulder. But again, from here to here, we have a lot of uh, a high difference, right? A $300 move. So again, I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to consider it that. Um, a second shoulder yet uh, until this really develops and then we might see what we're doing here but again I'm not too concerned about hitting shoulders we did have an inverse one right we hit the measure move almost spot on to where we had it uh, 7,809 uh, we hit uh, 7,813 so like a couple dollars off right so we knew this was gonna happen um, so let's see what else is going on here man um, I think that's it for this on the four hours man I don't have anything else going on that I could really call out uh, divergence wise so let's go into the one hour man um let's go into the one hour for bitcoin bitcoin on the one hour sitting neutral at 46.74 again moving to the downside right now I, look we went up high, lower than the previous one right we talked about this potentially then we went down but higher than the previous one again and uh, we also talked about that right starting to like tighten that range uh now we try to go higher again but fail and now we're probably gonna go down and fail again um I'll try to make a triangle of sorts. Uh, getting the playlist back on. Sorry. There we go. So what is happening here? Look, man. We, we go like this, right? Uh, it, it will make sense, sort of. In a second. Just let, me, let me show you this. There we go. Okay, there we go. And uh, from here, I'm going to use actually the, the wicks. Right now. I'm, I'm going to ignore this. Actually, I'm going to use it. There we go. Right now, we'll be making sort of this um, triangle, right? Uh, it's symmetrical, a little bit more downsloping than than usually just spot on symmetrical. But again, we might be doing some of this. Right now, we're going to go down, probably test at 20 May, try to bounce off that. If we bounce, again, we're probably going to find resistance here. We do we do have a couple lines we can trace. One of them is this one. The other one would be this one. It would be more immediate. 
Again, both of them would be valid areas where we could try to balance and touch. I want to get rid of this one. I like the larger one. It makes uh, more sense for the triangle that we're trying to make. Uh, although I'm ignoring this week here, uh, part of the week, I'm choosing to ignore it. Um, now, stuff that is happening here, right? Uh, shorter. And I, I might go to this chart here to show it uh, because it, it's also playing out, right? So, again, you're going lower, right, on, on your uh, price, and you're going higher on your momentum, creating hidden bearish divergence price continuation again you are kind of down sloping right now and your more major trend is down sloping so there's a chance this might still go down on price again um, maybe what we're starting to see play out here uh, and you also have it on your RSI right on your RSI you're also going slightly higher there we'll take it there there we go again uh, that's what I'm noticing right now so again uh, potential move to the downside uh, we talked about where we could go to the downside on this chart uh, I'll also throw it here uh, again. It just gets a little bit too cluttered uh, And I don't like it when the charts get too cluttered I'm gonna start uh, deleting stuff also from the older parts of the chart just so that we uh, get rid of all that, right? Um, there we go. So again, your divergence, right? The hidden, uh, hidden bearish so potentially uh, We continuate and we're moving to downside just as we were expecting not sure we're gonna hit this part here here or even get lower than this I might just come somewhere around here. We could still get down here and still make sense, right? But again, um, keep an eye out for this. Being a symmetrical triangle, it could break either way. But again, uh, I'm not sure if we're still gonna break to the upside yet with Bitcoin. So uh, just be careful, guys. On to um, Ethereum. What is happening with Ethereum, man, on the daily? Ethereum on the daily yesterday, nice move to the upside, gaining dominance 1.21%. Right now, uh, losing a little bit, 0.03%, even though it looks green, it's still losing. Uh, it's sitting at 8.46% of market cap. Now, uh, what is the price of Ethereum at? It's sitting at $150.52. Are we um, worried about it? Not really, man. We kind of try to break back into this uh, side, sideways rectangle that we were in, right? This uh, sideways channel that I have. We failed. Moving down on the price. Yesterday, nice comeback from a, a impulse down, right? Again, trying to make up some of that on the daily. Right now, still moving down. Again, uh, nice move by the bulls, gaining that. Uh, right now, it seems that we might break to the downside again. Uh, again, the day just started a couple hours ago. Let's wait and see how this keeps on playing out. Nothing else developing, man. Still making more, less negative momentum. Um, also, uh, moving a little bit higher on our RSI. And we're starting to move slightly down here, slightly down. Here, we could have a sort of slanted bullish divergence i'm not gonna call it that yet yeah you're going slightly lower as you can see from me to here right um, and uh, let's say from me to here again so you will be creating that divergence i want to wait and see how this keeps on playing out before i actually call this on the daily i don't believe we're gonna have that uh, so i much rather look at the shorter term and uh see where we're at in the four hours right so on the four hours we called this divergence right we call uh price action the downside we got it playing out right now we're getting a bounce are we getting it somewhere no we're still higher than this now here we're at positive momentum so we'll go to our negative momentum island again here uh you'll be going higher and here you'll be going lower if you want to go from here right you'll be going slightly higher that's where you bounce here you will be going uh let's say from uh, zero to here you're going to go slightly uh higher with your negative momentum but again you don't really have a negative island so i much rather take it to here right this will be 0 0.75 negative and this would be 0 0.82 negative still would make sense and more sense in there so again we would be creating still um hidden a bearish divergence so again price continuation now or tra sorry hidden bullish divergence uh price continuation again that's what we're seeing that bounce um that happened uh, yesterday at 22 hours i think we we're already off the air by the time this happened so again um seeing that small rally rejecting the 20 ma and starting to break to the downside let's see how this keeps on playing out sitting neutral on the rsi at 48.65 on the daily i don't think i called it sitting sold at 37.11 so let's go into the one hour man on the one hour still neutral sitting at 51.23 that positive momentum dying out we're starting to get like gapage here which is weird on this chart i'll go to this one see here we don't have it all right cool moving to downside this here shows negative even though it looks green the chart's a little bit screwed um but that's fine uh let's see here um uh, 40 46 all right cool so nothing to worry about in here we're going lower right we're making more negative momentum but we're bouncing maybe because bitcoin bounced and we're playing off that again we don't seem to have divergence on 
any of the oscillators to merit that move to the upside. Stick your channel. Hey, man, how's it going? Thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for popping it for a bit, man. Um, how's it going, bro? How's uh, your art, man? You never you never sent me that uh, instead of crypto uh, small art that you made. Uh, the tag, dude. If you guys haven't checked it out, uh, Sticky Art Channel has a very, very cool um, channel where he actually draws and makes uh, art. Uh, he's made some like really cool it uh, art, and then he made like tags, and he's made like uh, sneakers for Vans. I think it was Vans, uh, and he uh, well designed it, and he put him on the website for for voting to go on. And then he makes like really cool stuff. So especially when he does the live stream. It's really cool. I asked him the other day to draw a Master Chief, and he actually did. And it, it turned out to be pretty cool for a very, very short uh, uh, drawing, right? It was like very, like a couple minutes, and it was really amazing, man. Anyways, uh, if you guys have a chance, go check out his channel. He does some really, really cool stuff over there. Um, it's uh, Sticky Art Channel. He's actually on, on the chat, so he just typed that out. Uh, let's see here, man. I'm trying to figure out here. Are we going? Uh, we're going slightly higher. For here, we're going slightly lower, creating divergence, right, of the bearish type. Price action to the downside. Uh, we're getting that to play out. Uh, again, this chart's a little bit screwed. We'll go with this one. Uh, and we'll see if we have it here. Yes, of course, we also have it here. Uh, we're going there. And uh, we're going from uh, this high to this slightly li lower, uh, less positive momentum. So again, moving to the downside again. We're getting that price to break. We might bounce off that 20 MA. We'll see how that plays out for uh, Ethereum. But again, you might get a bounce here on the 20 MA. Uh, if you break it, then, uh, you know, uh, you can certainly come and test uh, this area over here. A thousand seven, uh, sorry, $146. $147 ish. Somewhere around this area, right? Anyways, uh, let's go on to uh, Ripple, man. What's happening with XRP? Awesome, bro. <clears throat> so, uh, Sticky Art saying uh, it goes good, right? Uh, how goes it? Yeah, it's going good in my end, man. So, he has a bubble art name tag video coming out. Uh, my channel's in it, so that's pretty cool. And he's a sh he should be uh, back home posting it this week. Awesome, awesome, dude. Thanks, I appreciate it. So, uh, if you guys do uh, get a chance, go see his channel, man. He does really, really nice art. And uh, he's a really cool guy. You can like you can chat with him. He does, like, uh, giveaways. He gives away markers. And... Uh, art supplies and sometimes gift cards i've seen a lot of stuff he, he gives out so uh, it's pretty cool man and he does like mini games during the stream to give out the stuff so again if you guys get a chance go check him out um so uh, yeah cool man let's look at this what's happening with uh ripple yesterday gaining dominance a little bit 1.18 percent right now losing it 0.28 percent sitting at five percent of market cap again we're sitting at five percent um that's amazing uh, thanks so much. You're getting ready to make prints. Awesome, bro. What are you gonna print? Are you gonna have a uh, minty fresh there? He made like this really cool mint. Uh, if, if you guys remember like that World Industries skateboards, we had like the little like water drop fighting the uh, fire drop. He made like this little like mint dude that looks like one of those. It reminds me of that really cool. Uh, and it's called minty fresh. And I, I guess it's like the uh, mascot of the channel. Yeah, some art and some stickers. Awesome, man. Uh, I might get one of those uh, minty fresh uh, stickers, man. It's pretty cool. It's a really cool drawing. Ripple uh, sitting at twenty-two cents. You just opened the Etsy store. Awesome, man. Uh, send me the uh, send me a link. Or if you're gonna post it on your channel, I'll just check it out there. But if you want to send the link to the Etsy store, that's fine. I'm not sure if the bot. I do have a bot running here from the Stream Elements. I'm not sure if he's gonna let you post that though. But if it doesn't, uh, let me know and I'll try to post it somewhere. Anyways, uh, what's happening with uh, with this uh, XRP, man? Moving to downside price again. Sitting at 22 cents. Am I, am I happy about this? Not really, man. Uh, we knew we we're going to move to the downside. We talked about it before. Uh, nothing really we can call out. We're moving lower again. More negative momentum building. Uh, lower on the RSI. Right now, we're still sitting sold at 32.81. So, there's not really developing anything on the daily. So, let's go into the four hours and see what's going on there, man. Um, getting stickers professional. Awesome, man. That's amazing, bro. Yeah, um, do check out his channel. He does really, really nice hard work for sure, man. Uh, so what's going on here, man? Uh, let's see. We're moving uh, lower. Negative momentum is fine. Let's see, we're here. Uh, we're going from a lower, right, to a higher low with less negative momentum. Again, nothing really on the divergences that we can call for uh, Ripple. 
Uh, also here we're slightly higher on our side. So again, nothing really happened on the four hours. We just had this bearish divergence. We broke down. We kind of bounced a little bit, rejecting the 20 MA and starting to move to the downside again. However, we are using a, a sort of support. I do have a line here. I'm trying to figure out which one is it. Okay, it's our 100% retrace. Uh, or a zero, right, from, from this low. We're hitting our previous low at 0 0.22, 251. So that's where we're almost heading to. And apparently, uh, we're, we got really close to it and we bounced from there. Let's wanna see how Ripple keeps on playing out on this far chart. And I'm not really confident in the market right now, to be honest, guys. Like I said, I'm out of, I'm out of most of the stuff except for my huddle back on Ripple, which is my, uh, my experiment long term. So again, uh, Bitcoin being below 200 MA overall, really not that confident in the market. So I haven't bound, found any uh, anything that says uh, we're gonna hit a bounce, right? Uh, a double bottom or any any, any inverse head and shoulders on Ripple. Any anything that would uh, that would state like, man, this is really gonna reverse trend right now. So again, I, the whole market, man, look down sloping. We got a reaction bounce of sorts, and now still moving down. So again, not the best looking for the market. So let's go into the one hour. On the one hour, we created this bullish divergence. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, potential price action to the upside. I know I traced this yesterday because it's November 30th at 21 hours. Look, I had it here. The stream hadn't finished yet because we hadn't done that. So again, we, I can still move this here, right? And pinpoint to where we actually left off. And voila, man, there we go. We have it. Bullish divergence, price action to the upside. We got that small pump, right? Then we try to break down a little bit. And then we've got another pump slightly higher than our previous high with more positive momentum. So again, nothing really bearish going on on the one hour. Um... Uh, the only thing I, I would say, and it's not really a bad thing, is uh, you're slightly lower right here on your price, right? Slightly, slightly lower. And then you will be going from like a zero to a positive, creating um, hidden bearish divergence, price continuation. And again, we're in a major downtrend. So that's probably why we're breaking to the downside. Again, uh, we're getting a nice bounce off the 20 MA on the one hour. Let's wait and see how this keeps on playing out for, for Ripple, right? For XRP. Uh, again, that's it for, for this. I'm going to move on to uh, Litecoin. What's happening with Litecoin dominance? Yesterday, gaining dominance 2.20%. Very nice dominance gain. Right now, losing a little bit, 0.30%. Sitting at 1.56% off market cap. Price of Litecoin, $47.12. Man, not one of the best performers. But again, not one of the worst performers. Uh, Losing today, sitting at 47, uh, 47.12, like I said, uh, positive momentum dying out, uh, sitting sold still on the RSI at um, 37.34. So is it good? Is it bad? Man, really nothing else is developing. So again, uh, we're kind of like flatlining here. And uh, sometimes what happens when you get this kind of bounces is that you, you break down again more. So just be careful with this. Um, it, it'll keep on developing. Uh, I'm not sure. We might get a positive momentum island. I'm not sure how strong it's going to be. But again, uh, Bitcoin is getting one and it's really not being that strong. So again, uh, nothing happening on the daily. Let's go into the four hours, man. We had divergence, right? Bearish, price action to the downside, played out. We had this other divergence develop. We called it out yesterday during the stream. We were actually down here when I was in the stream. So I'll fix this and um, place it where it's supposed to uh, be touching, right? And uh, we'll, we'll call it there. So we went there and then uh, we went uh, here, I guess. Awesome. So we have this going on again. Uh, hidden bullish divergence, price action, uh, price continuation. Again, uh, we're in, we were within a sort of small uptrend. We're seeing that play out. Rejecting the 20 MA on the four hours, not the best indicator. Again, uh, this four hour candle still going on. Let's see how it keeps on playing out. Positive, uh, negative momentum dying out, and sitting neutral on the RSI at 48.05. We might get a cross. We were talking about getting a cross yesterday, sort of. I think uh, of the. MACD and the signal line, they were kind of starting to come together. Once we get those crosses, sometimes we get those violent moves to the upside, right? Like sometimes we've seen it here. Like we got a cross and look, we got this massive green candle. Sometimes it comes accompanied by this. Sometimes it doesn't. So again, it's one of those things that can play out. Again, just wait for it and watch the market to see if those moves are going to develop. Let's go into the one hour. On the one hour, we got a cross, right? And then we got our massive candle a couple uh, hours later. Anyways, uh, let's see what's going on with this, man. We had divergence, right? Uh, we got that small movement to the upside. Again, market breaking is down. Going lower and lower still. Uh, now, where is this at, man? Apparently, we developed some bullish divergence here on the shorter term, right? We're going from uh, here to this much lower low. Uh, this was at uh, yesterday, man. And do we have something here, man? 
Zero 017, zero 016, yes, very slightly. From here to here, man. There we go. That's what we developed, right? A very, very, uh, almost non-existent uh, bullish divergence, right? Uh, so again, it would be strong. This is slightly lower, although you could even trace it as a straight line and call it a weak kind of uh, bullish divergence, but still playing us to the upside, right? Uh, seeing that nice move to the upside again. Um, high, lower, high, less positive momentum. Again, just going with the market on the bottom part. Uh, you don't have that divergence on the other side just on the magnet histogram. That's all it played out, right? That's all it did. That's it for this, man. We're, we're about to get a cross of the MACD under the signal line. And sometimes when those crosses happen, we do get those massive red candles, right? So again, be careful with this. Uh, keep an eye out for it. Getting ads coming in. Snap, man. There we go. And getting rid of the ads real quick. Awesome possum. Easy peasy, man. There you go. New track. That's it for this, man. Nothing else really developing right now. We gotta wait for a pattern to develop, right? And uh, I'm not seeing much even zooming out. So again, uh, that's gonna be it for this. I'm gonna move on to Binance. What's happening with Binance dominance, man? Uh, price yesterday losing dominance, 0 0.19. Right now gaining dominance. 0.42 sitting at 1.24% of market cap. Again, I want the pie to be a little better divided. It'll be good for everyone. We talked about this. I left this line here. So if we come and touch it and bounce of that, we'll probably create uh, divergence, right? Um, uh, but right now, we didn't. I think we were down here some, somewhere when I was doing the stream. And that's what I had it down there. Anyways, um, going to get rid of uh, this. Because whatever I had traced here, it's obviously not playing out. So... Anyways, I'll wait. Actually, I'll wait for the um, until we go into the four hours because I'm, I believe this might be for the four hours and it's just showing up here just as there's data here. Anyways, uh, are we doing something? Not really. Uh, negative momentum dying out. Sitting sold still on the RSI at uh, 36.40. So again, uh, we'll just see what we're doing in the short time frames because nothing happening on the daily. On the short time frames, rejecting the 20 May right now. Uh, this one hour candle going out. Hit it. Bounce of that. Anyways, what's going on here, man? I do have a line from... Uh, okay, so this is from the daily, man. All right, so this is from the daily, and it kind of died out, I guess. So I'm going to get rid of this, this, and uh, I guess it's just those lines. Anyways, uh, from here to here, we're creating... Um, we're talking about creating a hidden bullish divergence, price continuation. We got that move to the upside again. Rejecting the 20MA twice. This candle and this candle are rejecting the 20MA. Sitting neutral on the RSI, 46.58. We're not really doing much after that. We're still on this negative momentum. It's dying out. About to create a cross of the MACD over the signal line. That's about it. Let's go into the four hours. There's nothing else developing here. So on the one hour, sorry. Uh, going lower, right? We created this divergence. We called it out. Uh, price action to the upside. We were down here when I was doing the stream, so I'll just fix it. We're still developing it. Got that nice move to the upside. Uh, got a small movement to the downside, right? And then uh, rallying up again. Uh, going higher on the positive momentum. So again, not really worried about this. Uh, creating that bearish divergence yet. Again, we're going higher on the price. Higher on our uh, Mac, on our MACD histogram. Right? More positive momentum and also higher on the RSI. So again, nothing really else developing here. Uh, except for the stuff that we already called out, right? So again, uh, not much, man. Um, this is higher, but this is also lower. We have not gotten even to this point, right? So again... We're not really creating any kind of bearish divergence yet on uh, Binance. So uh, moving to the downside is probably because Bitcoin is also moving to the downside. Again, Bitcoin is really playing the tune for the market, right? On Bitcoin, we had that bullish divergence, right? We talked about it. Um, sorry. Oh, let's see this one. There we go. This was yesterday's stream. It wasn't finished yet. So we had it up to here. Again, we're talking about a potential move to the upside. Look, we got it. Again, we moved to the downside. We didn't have anything else going on. Right now, we're creating that kind of bearish divergence that's moving the market down, and it's moving everyone down. Uh, again, let's wait and see how this keeps on developing uh, for, for Bitcoin, right? So that's it for this, man. If anyone has any requests, toss them up on the chat. We'll definitely look at the coins. If not, that's going to be the stream for tonight. We still have, like, a couple minutes. The stream has been short. Uh, we've been here for about uh, 52 minutes, and... Uh, yeah, we still got time to look at stuff. So you guys have any requests, throw them up on the chat and I'll definitely look at those. And we'll take it from there, right?
So if no requests come in, though, I'll definitely uh, end up the stream in, in a couple minutes, though. Um, again, I'm not too worried about where this is going to close. Uh, right now, we still have, like, uh, seven minutes to go, six minutes to go before this closes. Uh, printed. Uh, Mr. T, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't get that reference, man. Uh, I do... I'm not sure if that's going to be against Kappa, though. Even though my content, I'm pretty sure, is not for kids. If you guys don't know, there's this thing coming out with Kappa where it's affecting all YouTubers of all sorts and makes. And uh, if you have anything that is deemed that is for children or a mixed audience, uh, you can get into trouble, uh, apparently. And uh, you can get fined a lot of money. I'm, I'm still, like, reading on all this Kappa stuff and how it's going to affect. I'm pretty sure my channel is not for kids. But having uh, Deadpool pop up and, and Iron Man and Hulk and Mr. T... I'm not sure if that's going to make it uh, deemed for children. I, I hope it doesn't, really. They're not up a lot. And most of the content that I do, I'm pretty sure it's not for kids. It's not even for anyone that is not over the age of 18, I guess. Although I'm not marking it as for the age of 18 and higher. Because anyone that's 17, 16, and 15 can still want to learn about crypto. Can still come in here. And again, uh, all this couple stuff is just freaking weird, man. I'm, no one's really sure how, the, how everyone's going to be affected. And uh, there's all these videos going on about Kappa and what's happening. And, uh, you know, but again, uh, a lot of stuff uh, still out there and uh, really trying to make sense of it. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I was zoomed out. I just noticed something. 1756, 1739. Okay, cool. This is very, very slight. It's almost non-existent. I'm gonna actually have to like move this, make it much larger for it to be able to, for you guys to be able to see it. Anyways, from here to here, right? You're going slightly higher. It's just very minuscule. And from here to here, you're going slightly lower. It's just almost non-existent. Again, you could call it a straight line and call it weak divergence, but this is this is at 17.56. This is 17.38. Uh, 17 Again, slightly lower. You can even call it the same, and you will still be divergence, right? But again, price action to the downside, maybe why we're breaking down. Again, we try to run, reject that 20 MA, reject, uh, and that's part of the reason we're running to the downside, right? Again, uh, yeah, that's it, man. You signed a couple petition? Yeah, I signed a couple petition as well, man. Was it the one on change.org? Because that's the one I went on to sign. Yeah, I signed that one as well, man. Uh, <clears throat> even though I'm sure I'm not going to get affected, or I believe I'm not going to get affected, I'm worried about the other crypto people that have their channels, like uh, Jank Bricks and... Uh, but your channel, bro, you make you make art, right? And uh, sometimes you draw cartoony-looking stuff. So again, it might seem like it's directed to, t to kids, or they can dim it as if, if it's directed to kids, even though it's not, right? You have a mixed audience. And I was, looking, I was uh, listening to this lawyer on YouTube saying that, that they omitted that because they, it's actually on COPPA law that you can have a mixed audience and it just works differently. Uh, and YouTube apparently omitted that. So again, uh, it's one of those things that you really gotta like, I guess like read up on and like get advice from someone else. It's just weird, man. They, the way they're handling it, the way they're going with this is not 100% clear for anyone. Um, so again, yeah, if you're a creator that has anything that can be deemed for kids, you can potentially get into trouble for that. And, you know, it's not the best. Um, it's just weird. And I, I signed it because I, even though my content might not be deemed for kids or whatever, I, I do believe that uh, there's other creators that will also benefit from us get banding together, banding together to uh, really sign this petition. And uh, even if you're not a creator and you appreciate the content that gets put out on YouTube, uh, go sign this petition uh, is really important for a lot of creators it, we, that a lot of people that make their livelihood on YouTube are going to be affected by it um, again I'm not going to get too much into detail because I don't have all the legal stuff on COPPA so again uh, just go check it out if you're interested if you, re if you really want to help YouTube and the YouTubers that uh, make content here uh, really go check that out and sign that petition and write a small reason a small argument as to why uh, the more I speak up, the better. Yeah, man. The more people that go sign that petition, it's going to be better. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's going to affect a lot of us. Uh, it's going to affect how we monetize channels, how information flows. Um, and again, uh, you know, YouTube kind of backed out and uh, said, like, it's on the creators, right? 
uh, when the creators are not the ones that are collecting the data on kids, right? But they said you as creators have to designate your content as for children or not. So if you designate wrong or they determine that you designate it wrong, you're going to get fined. And again, we're, the creator is not the one that's making any profit from, from the advertisement. Yeah, you do get profit from the ads that get placed there. But again, you're not the one that's collecting data on children, right? The, the YouTube, the company is the one that is collecting the data. And again, you know, uh, it's a little bit unfair that they're passing it on to the... Uh, to the to the streamers or to the end users right so again for me it's really not um, I don't believe for me it's gonna be an issue uh, but I do have friends that stream and other people that I know that stream and uh, you know sticky art also streams and like I said he does art and uh, it's unsure yet how or if they're gonna be affected by it or not uh, it, and it's just gonna change the content right at first it wasn't you can you couldn't make edgy content now you cannot make family friendly content because if it's considered family friendly it could be deemed that it's for kids and if it's for kids then uh, you get in trouble if you don't designate as that and if you designate it as for kids on a video per video basis then uh, they can collect data that means that uh, you don't get targeted advertisement that means you get less revenue from the ads that get placed on your channel um, and then there's this all, whole other stuff that starts to happen, right? So again, it's, it's not the best that is happening on YouTube, but again, it's something that we all as YouTubers have to get together and like, uh, you know, speak up against, or, or at least voice our opinion on it, because it's gonna affect everyone, not just the ones that make uh, targeted ads. Um, but again, you know, YouTube is changing and, and we gotta adapt, uh, because COP is gonna apply for everyone, not just YouTube. They're gonna come after Twitch. They're gonna come after everyone else after this uh, is settled, right? Anyways, a uh, couple seconds there before we actually change ours. We just did new candle developing and opening below the 20 MA. Again, let's see how this new one hour develops. Again, we were kind of hoping that we we're gonna get a bounce off here. Uh, again, this candle just started a couple seconds ago. Um, wait and see how this uh, runs, right? Um, Guys, there's really not requests coming in, so I'm going to call it a stream for tonight. Um, tomorrow's Monday. It's a work day for me. So it was a lot of fun being here with you guys. I do appreciate each and every one of you. If you like what we do, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you're notified when we go live. Again, um, if you want to support the channel, you can retweet our tweets. You can uh, bring awareness to it by uh, telling people that we exist. Talk about crypto to your friends, to your family, to your coworkers. Let them know that we are here. We're a really, really friendly channel. Uh, all advice is very safe. What we try to give is safe advice, safe trading advice. Uh, we talk about potentials to the upside, to the downside. You guys make your decisions, right? Uh, I just point out whatever I see uh, to both sides. I won't give you target prices where you can hit. Uh, we'll talk about certain areas where you can rest up, right? If you were to run to the upside, hit here, and then hit here, and then uh, hit here, right? And then uh, if you get that, hit here, right? We'll talk about things in that way. But again, you're, you make your own decisions, right? We try to bring... Uh, balanced news so that you, you can make informed decisions right no FOMO no FUD uh, if we believe an article is a scam or FOMO or FUD we'll, noti we'll notify you of that and uh, at least I'll give you my opinion on that and then um, you know on the analysis we go uh, we do light analysis I don't go too technical I go don't go like off the deep end but again you guys make your own decision as to how this is gonna happen right? I tell you look watch out for this if this happens this might happen and this might happen and if this happens this and this might happen but again that way you know kind of what the market might do and then you can decide how you want to play it out right anyways guys that's gonna be it for tonight thank you for watching again uh if you like what we do like comment subscribe and hit that bell and uh, yeah i'll catch you tomorrow guys uh sticky art thank you for being here man thank you for being on the chat thank you for participating um yeah that's gonna be it for tonight guys thanks for watching